Olivia McDaniel. It is such a pleasure to have the opportunity to get to hear your story. And I'm excited to share it. Take a chance to leap of faith, leave the nest. I guess that's how we've learned to fly. So you're the owner and head coach of Performance Gymnastics. Yep, in Dayton, Ohio. Wow. And I hope nobody minds. Um, this is Rapunzel, and she won't have it any other way than to be on here, and you'll hear her if I, I didn't allow her to be on the other <laughs> So, just getting the opportunity to talk to you a little bit before we start this interview, um, I can't help but feel the passion just permeate uh, from you, and it, it's just, it, it's, it's something contagious. Um, where does that come from? Um, I have just a lot of places. I think, I mean, it's, it, I know it started at 10 years old when I started doing gymnastics and, um, it has definitely not slowed down. I think more than anything, it's probably grown and gotten stronger. Um, as I'm going into, I think my 11th year of coaching. Yeah. And wow. fifth year of owning performance gymnastics. Gymnastics in rural South Carolina. Mm -hmm. What's that like? Paint a picture for me. Well, um, Honestly, like just what you would think, there's not a whole lot of gymnastics going on in rural South Carolina. We live back in the country at Camp Bello, South Carolina. Um, when you say country, you mean? I mean, like we were, we had a lot like back in the farmland of Camp Bello, South Carolina at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So we were like back out. I mean, it took us 20 minutes to get to the grocery store. I think of. I've heard some of those words in country lyrics. <laughs> yeah, over down yonder, that's where we were. So anyway, I started gymnastics when I was 10 years old, which is super late. Um, but, and we started a very small, in a very small program and gradually my sister and I were going up and we knew we had to um, move somewhere that could take us to, that had good coaches that could take us to the elite program. So we had been desperately trying to find something um, so we could excel at what we wanted to do. And luckily enough, we found Mihai and Christina in Greenville, South Carolina. That's about 45 minutes away. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So this is fate aligning. You you find your jackpot gym. You find your second father in a coach. Yeah, for sure. Um, my mom always says it was an answer to her prayer. She had been, um, she knew the talent and the work ethic that my sister and I had and the goals that we had. And she, um, we were just so blessed to be able to find them. And she said it was an answer to her prayers for us. Wow. Wow. So this catapults your gymnastics career yeah um, kind of get everything you, started pretty much right brings you into your elite world mm -hmm. um what's going on in your mind right now what's your goals what's your vision uh 2000 olympics that was where that's where i wanted to go that's the pretty much the only thing that i wanted um I, I was super focused on that and we were on our way um this is the buzz you're feeling from your coach your parents yeah everybody. that was our that, that was my goal my dream my everything like i put everything on the line for that all in so, yeah. Wow. And how far is this gym from home? Is this down the street? Is this? No, it's for, with 45 minutes. And um, so we were, I was doing two out, two practices a day. So we were driving back and forth a lot. Uh, we ended up getting an apartment over in Greenville so we could stay to do schoolwork and things because it was wow. just too much commuting. So this so, is commitment to the extreme. Yeah. And especially leaving um, where we were living in Campbell, which was gorgeous. It was, it was a lot, it was a lot of dedication, but um, yeah, that's just, that's, how I am, that's how I've always been. I'm all or nothing, like head first in everything that we're doing. Wow. wow. So that's, that's what we did. So we, um, we had an apartment and we would stay there during the week. I would do practices in the morning, do schoolwork at the apartment, and then practice in the evening. And then we'd go back on the weekend, back home. Wow. Is this the setup for what comes next uh, for the big surprise or maybe not so much a surprise, but the blessing of uh, college life? scholarship full ride yeah that's what um that was kind of the next path i did so uh my goal was the 2000 olympics and i would say that my um i obviously did not reach that goal <laughs> um uh, that's one of my well i'm not going to say regrets but biggest learning like life lesson that i learned was um, the things that held me back from getting my goals i was not mentally tough competitively um I wasn't able to show the world what I could do. Every time I'd get to a meet, I would hold back or I would be so nervous that I wasn't able to do my routines to the best of my ability. So that um, that's the first thing that um, 
that caused me to not get to meet my big dream. And that's something now that I hold it such a high priority to help my kids with their mental toughness. We do mental toughness training. We do um, workbooks. We do all kind of things throughout the throughout the year. Honestly, working on them like for performance anxiety. A lot of them have that, um, and not so much just with gymnastics with anxiety and performance anxiety, but like as children um, grow and growing up, so that them have better confidence in themselves. And that's something that we've um, we pride ourselves on at PGA helping kids be able to stand up for themselves and speak for themselves. That's and, awesome. Yeah, so that's something that I struggle with so much and um, didn't <laughs> and didn't get until I was older, actually, until I was in college. So that was one um, big roadblock for me in my elite training that I don't want ever to happen with my kids. So uh, the other problem that I had, the other issue I had was the fact that my coaches were European and um, very new to... USA Gymnastics and didn't know the rules and the politics and all the kind of things that we needed to do to get into the higher up, higher level of the elite world. And um, so that is something that I strive for with my girls also is to make sure that I am on the up and up always of what's going on. I have no problem calling people and um, calling my friends and be like, hey, what, what are, what's the new rules this month? What's going on? Like, how can I help better help them? There's no stupid questions. No, definitely not. I have no problem asking them. You'll put anything on the line yes, for these girls. So I just want to make sure they have all the tools and then, then I'm able to give them everything. Wow. Not just like in the gym, but. Wow. And your girls are blessed because of it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So you have this aspiring career in gymnastics you maybe don't go to the Olympics, which is your goal, but something else comes now in the form of a D1 scholarship. Yeah, so then, um, I mean, I'm, get, like, I'm getting older, obviously, so I was like, I think it's, uh, I think it's like the end of my junior year, and we didn't really know anything about the college recruitment process at all. Another thing that I'm working, you know, that, that I want to make sure my girls know, and so I do a lot of research on it, um, but we had a friend of mine that did all the equipment for the meets. He... Um, came to my coaches and was like, hey, have y'all put any college recruiting videos out for Liv? Like, I have um, colleges ask me about her. She and might be good. <laughs> she, might, she might be, might be all right. Um, they, which they had college ask about me, but they had not heard anything. They had no information on me. Um, and we were like, what? So my mom and I put together recruitment videos and were able to send them out to kind of give more um, information on me because nobody knew who I was. Wow, did you know you were that good? Oh, no, definitely not. Wow. So then what happened? So then I started getting recruited. Only by the SEC, though. That's the only ones that I actually put that out there. I didn't want to leave the South. So, um, but yeah, so I was being recruited by um, all the schools in the SEC and just talking to them, um, kind of. Like I said, I struggled with performance anxiety. And so I, it was very hard for me to talk to these college coaches and things like that. Um, so I, I did my best. But, but they're calling you. They want yeah. you to come to their school and pay for it. Yeah, and um, I chose the greatest university, Auburn University, out in Alabama, War Eagle. Um, one of the best decisions of my life. Yeah. Definitely a culture shock going into um, a, a D1 university and not knowing anybody. I mean, I was very blessed that I knew that I would be going into this gymnastics family, that I already had 14 teammates, that, you know, it's like... It's kind of kind of like a sorority. Like you, you go in, you know, you've already got a family, and then that bled out into Auburn athletics and um, and all the athletes in Auburn. So that was that helps. Yes, that definitely that definitely helped. And I was also um, I'm so grateful for the teammates that I um, had there and the friendships that we that we created. I am still um, best friends with my teammates. We have a group chat together and we talk every single day. Um, I mean, it's been 15 years, and uh, we still are best friends and talk every day. Just incredible. Yeah, and I, I love that. I That was my favorite thing about college gymnastics because um, club gymnastics is an individual sport. It's okay. not very it's not very team-oriented at all, but um, college gymnastics is completely opposite. It's all about the team. And I love that so much, and I love that philosophy and that, that culture that they gave it to it. That, that is something that I've put in with PGA, that we – are more focused on the team and the team goals and the team winning than just your individual awards and things like that. And family. It, it, it's our back to our family culture. So you got this real family. Yeah. Throughout your college career with your teammates, with everything, but it wasn't like that in every area, was it? 
No, unfortunately it was not. Um, like I said before, I was so blessed with the teammates that I have. And, um, and another thing I said, it was the, one of the best decisions I ever made was going to Auburn. The only negative thing that came out of college for me was, um, my coaches. They were very, very negative and very, really? abu yeah, very abusive mentally. And, um, Physically to an extent, not towards us, but some of the things that they had us do that were unsafe and um, overtrained. I just, I realized well, how much of an impact a coach can have in your life, you know, for yourself. And then um, obviously the passion I had for gymnastics, I, because of the overtraining and things that, um, that happened to me while I was at gymnast in college, um, I had to go on medical scholarship going into my junior year because my back had given out and um, I was no longer able to continue to do gymnastics. But um, because of the mental abuse that happened, I wanted nothing to do with the sport. I, I was done. I was still obviously good friends with my teammates and I love them and um, talk to them every day, but I didn't even want to step foot, foot in the gym. I wouldn't even go watch them, um, them finish competing. This is a sport you dedicated a good portion of your life to, which yeah. you fell in love with. It was a passion burning inside you. You fell in love with it. I did. I, I wanted. I didn't want anything to do with it. I actually like sold. I sold all my leotards. Got rid of everything. Like all my Auburn stuff. Everything. Just wow. I, I like done. Wow. I, did, I put it to a thrift shop. I mean, I didn't want nothing to do with it. I'm very upset that I sold. I threw all this away now. But yeah. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, that's how much. I, how upset I was and how broken I was from what they had done. Wow. I uh, I can't imagine that. Um, but there, this is a dream for so many girls in America and across the world. And here you are um, at the height of your college career. Give me a highlight in that season. Um, there actually there were a lot of highlights besides um, the sad part of the coaches. Um, one of the biggest highlights was learning that team atmosphere and being with the, in the bond that my teammates and I created there. I actually enjoy competing for the first time in my life when I was in college. And I learned that from my teammates because we had each other's backs and we were there and we pushed each other and supported each other so much that the nerves were out. I loved competing in college and I finally got over that performance anxiety. I actually, it was not like I was competing. It was more like I was performing and I was doing this big show with my teammates. And that's one of the things I love about college gymnastics so much. And I think, especially now, the coaches that are in place um, do such a great job of bringing that team spirit with those girls. And it's a reward for all the hard work that they did. And um, I know that I've, I've got some girls right now that I've coached um, that are in college and they love it. And I've, I've loved being a part of their process for recruiting because I did get to talk to the coaches. And so I understand um, <clears throat> that they're that they're great. They're going to support my kids, and, yeah. and that's that's one of the biggest things. Because you know, I'm like handing off babies to you know my babies to these colleges, and I want to make sure they're going to be in a good place and not experience what I did. Sounds like what the camaraderie really again brings that family aspect and comfort zone where you can really feel safe to be who you are in, in your own team. Yeah, and that's that's what I took from college and then put into. Uh, PGA was that I wanted it to always be that way that it felt like a team and the girls were supporting each other and excited for each other and they wanted the team to do well not it just be an individual sport that they only care about themselves so that's what we um, put into place we do things all year long not just during com competition season where they're competing as a team not just in their levels we have little sticker contests and we've got all kind of things that we do all year long that they're put into different teams to um, kind of create that fun camaraderie and um, excitement for your buddy to do well, yeah. you know? So yeah. I did get that from college and I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. I love it. Wow, that's awesome. I'm super intrigued. I can't wait next weekend to dive deeper into your story. We're gonna to touch on a near-death experience. Uh, we're gonna find out how you got your passion back and how you implemented everything and kind of brought this into a full success story all the way around. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to um, sharing the rest of my story with you. I love it. I'm excited uh, to do it, and I loved it so far, so can't wait. All right, thank you.